The A's and the Orioles are right in the middle of the AL playoff picture. Let's get you out to Camden Yards. Here's Justin Kutcher. Thank you, Greg. Well, Chris Davis, the major league leading home run hitter, is awaiting his chance here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon as Manny Machado and you want to assess but a ceremony before the game here in the inner harbor of Baltimore as the A's and O's get set to battle on Major League Baseball on Fox. So look at the standings. You see Baltimore and Oakland both in contention in their respective divisions. But look at that wild card. That has been being oh so important as Oakland and Baltimore are right there in contention for the playoffs. And hello to everybody, Justin Kutcher alongside Mitch Williams. And Mitch, if you were to look at the schedule and think August 24th, as a casual baseball fan or a big-time baseball fan, A's, Orioles. You probably think, A's, Orioles, really? Well, yeah, really, it's A's, Orioles. Big series. Well, absolutely huge series. And anybody that questions whether or not the wild card has been important for our game, all you have to do is look at the number of teams within striking distance of the wild card. These two teams are within striking distance. And two years ago, this would have been a meaningless game. These two teams now have put themselves in a position to be postseason teams. They both have some managers who have kind of changed the outlook for their teams. No question. Now, I think if you look at Bob Melvin, he's a guy that lets his... As far as the Orioles are concerned, they have the young stars. They have Chris Davis, Manny Machado, Adam Jones. But Brian Roberts has been here since 2001. He's been through the thick, he's been through the thin, and last night he tried to help his team get to October. High fly ball, deep right field. Did he get enough? Back it goes, and there! There's a grand slam for Roberts.
be eyes on the season. Yeah, and he's had a very good year for the A's. He's been something that they've needed an everyday shortstop here in Oakland and he's filled that role very well. Two balls and no strikes here to Lowry. And this is where Tillman's got to kind of pitch backwards. You don't want to throw fastballs here in the hitters count. He got away with one right there with an 89 mile an hour fastball up. Buck Showalter talked about Chris Tillman to us earlier today and just talked about his mentality. He just takes the ball and is going to go at you. Yeah. And, and the thing that I, I like what uh, Buck said about him. There's his change up right there. He, he got uh, Lowry out in front of that one. And that's what you need. He's got to change speeds. But what I love what Buck said, Tillman is not afraid. And that's the one thing you can't you can't ever show a hitter. If you show that hitter that you're afraid, that it just trickles on down the line. Every hitter sees it. Max Scherzer with the league leading 18 wins going up against Matt Harvey today. How about yeah. a pitching matchup there at City Field? Yeah, that's gonna be a doozy. Two, two misses, three balls and two strikes. By the way, you and I called the only loss of the year for Max Scherzer. Well, that's good. <laughs> I'm sure Max is glad we're here in Baltimore. <laughs> July 13th, Detroit hosted Texas. The 3 2 pitch, spoiled foul. We'll do it again. So, this is what's ironic. Chris Tillman has a chance to win his 15th game. He'd be the first 15 game winner for Baltimore. Since Eric Bedard, he was acquired in a trade from Seattle for Bedard with Adam Jones, George Sherrill, and a couple of other guys as he walks Jed Lowry. So, man on first one out. But think about that trade for a minute. Eric Bedard, at that point, was a big time pitcher for Baltimore. A lot of people liked him. Goes out to Seattle. They get Adam Jones, an all star. They get Chris Tillman, all star this year. George Sherrill, who was their closer for a couple of years. I mean, that helped build this franchise to what they are today. Well, there's no question. Anytime you're going to build a franchise, you want to start at the middle. And, and they've done that with Adam Jones, Weeders, J.J. Hardy's probably the best overall shortstop in the game today. And now they got Brian Roberts back at second base. This team's extremely strong up the middle. First pitch ball to Josh Donaldson. One ball, no strikes. Adam Jones, a gold glover out there in center field. We have yet to see Tillman go to his breaking ball. He's done fastball change up so far. There it oh, is. No, there's the breaking ball in the dirt. Two balls and no strikes. Now Buck Showalter also said this about Tillman. He can walk two batters on eight straight pitches. But he's going to come back and still go right at you. Well yeah and I can relate to that. <laughs> and you have to have a manager that understands that. And Buck being around as long as he has, he gets to know his players, or his players' mentalities, and, and what situations they can handle mentally. The 2 0 to Donaldson. Big swing and miss, two balls and one strike. And you can see right there, that's a, that's a hitter's count, 2 0, and he, Tillman made a very good pitch with a fastball down in the zone. As you see, Weeders, he hits the mitt basically right there. That's a good sinking fastball. It actually looks like a four seamer, but has very late sinking life on it. Lowry off at first. As you saw right there, Donaldson hits him pretty well. A three for three lifetime off there. And now it's two balls and two strikes. So he comes back to even up the count. And that's a straight change. He threw a change up out of the same arm slot with the same arm speed, and that's a result you get a hitter out in front. Donaldson good numbers on the year 293 18 home runs and 72 RBIs with Brendan Moss on deck. The 2 2 from Tillman ground ball to short Hardy goes to second for one over to first the 6 4 3 inning ending double play. And that's exactly what they want. They want the ball sinking on the ground. We're through a half inning no score Orioles coming up.
love the food out there on Utah Street. Bottom half of the first, no score. A's and O's. Today's starting a lineup for the Orioles. Brought to you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Nate McLeod leads off. Manny Machado bats second. Chris Davis in the three hole. Adam Jones will clean things up. Matt Wieters will bat fifth. Nick Markakis bats sixth. The bottom third of the order, J.J. Hardy, Ryan Flaherty, and Brian Roberts. And they will face Jared Parker, who's been one of the best pitchers in baseball since May. Yeah, you look at his numbers. 25 starts, 9 and 6 with 3-7 ERA, 155 in the third inning. 51 walks, 110 Ks. He's not going to strike you out. He's got a sinking fastball, 89 to 92, and a very, very good changeup. It is not a pitch to contact changeup. It's a swing and miss changeup. If he has that working, that's how he's, he can kind of dis, disarm this offense. He'll face Nate McLeod to start things off. McLeod, 269, eight home runs, 25 RBIs. Parker, seven straight wins, 15 straight starts without a loss. And the first pitch is down low for ball one. Nate McLeod has kind of resurrected his career here in Baltimore. He came over, Buck gave him an opportunity to play last year, and he did a good job for him and been their leadoff hitter all year long. The 1-0. Down low again, two balls and no strikes. You think about it, you got Nate McLeod, Buck Showalter gave him a shot. You've got Chris Davis, Buck Showalter gave him a shot. Both guys paying huge dividends. Well, I think every player draws their, their confidence from their manager. If you have a manager that does not trust running you out there every day, and you know, okay, I'm only going to get one start here as a pitcher, or I'm only going to get four at bats, and if I go 0 for 4, I'm not playing. Buck didn't do that to these guys. He, he gave them job and let them go out there and perform them. 2 1. McLeod to right field coming in as Reddick on the run makes the catch for the first down. The defense behind Parker in the outfield just saw Josh Reddick in right. Chris Young gets a start in center. Yohannes Cespedes in left around the horn in the infield. Brandon Moss at first. Eric Sogard at second. Jed Lowry at short. Josh Donaldson at third. And behind the plate is Kurt Suzuki. Yohannes Cespedes, a strong arm out there in left field. And Chris Young, known for his glove, some power. Doesn't have the average this year. The first pitch to Machado is taken for a strike. Well, Young came over in a deal from Arizona. He was used to playing every day in center field. And that's not the case here in Oakland. you got Coco Chris who plays center field, so he's got a head to split time. You saw the numbers there on Manny Machado. 3 excuse me, 294, 11 home runs, 58 RBIs. This guy was on fire before the All-Star break. Had 39 doubles prior to the break. Since then, just four and hitting 242. But he is one of the most exciting players in all of baseball. Pops it up. Foul territory, first base side. Suzuki now Moss, and Moss will make the catch for two outs. And, and Machado's future is so bright, it's not even funny. He's sitting on 43 doubles. He, he could end up hitting 60. If he gets hot again, who knows? Well, he could end up hitting 60 doubles. The big question around baseball is, could Chris Davis end up hitting 60 or 61 home runs? He's at 46 right now with a 304 average, 117 RBIs. And when he swings, it looks effortless. Yeah, there's pitches that he absolutely looks like he's been fooled on that he hits out of the ballpark. He hit one ball out of the park this year on a broken bat. In his last 162 oh, that, games, he has those 61 home runs. That, that was last year he hit the ball out of the park with a broken bat. Any year, it's, it's pretty amazing. The shift is on against Davis. The 0 1 from Parker. Fouled away, no balls and two strikes. And I, I'm surprised right here that Parker has given him those two pitches. First two pitches of the at bat are both in his wheelhouse. He's going right after him. That's a good sign. Parker's 0 2. And this is how with the changeup. There's that changeup right there. You want hitters swinging at arm speed. If you're throwing that pitch out of the same arm slot with the same arm speed, that's where you get the hitter out on his front foot. The 
The one two from Parker. Got him looking on the outside corner. A one two three inning worked by Jared Parker. We're through one no score A's and O's. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by the 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And by Taco Bell, sometimes you gotta live Moss. South of the second here in Baltimore. Bob Melvin in his third season as the A's manager. Led his team to the postseason last year. I thought he had a great point. He said, we were in first place one day last year. The only last day, day of the counted. season. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that really is it's the truth. The last day is the only day that really counts. That pitch got away from Chris Tillman. One ball, no strikes to Moss. And he's throwing two breaking balls right now. Both one's been in the dirt and one's been up high. He's trying to find a feel for that pitch right now. There it is. He gets it. Finally got it in the strike zone. And that's what's going to happen. Anytime you get a guy that's got a good curveball. They want to find that release point early in the game. Fastball is inside. Two balls and one strike. Brandon Moss has a home run in each of his last three starts facing the shift here. It is amazing how many players face a shift in baseball today. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of it. I know if, if I was pitching, I would not like it. Uh, I had a tendency to move guys like my second baseman or my shortstop, but I would not want a complete overshift like that and leave the whole side of the left, the whole left side of the infield open. And by the way, the guy in shallow right field is Manny Machado. 2-2, Two -two, Moss, skies one to right field. Markake is coming in, Jones coming over. Jones will call for it and make the catch. How about the four keys to the game? Well, for me, it, it's quite simple. Uh, the A's have got to hit with runners in scoring position. They have not done a very good job of that since the break. The Orioles, the guy on the mound, Chris Tillman, they have got to get depth out of him. They don't have one complete game out of one of their starting pitchers this year, and that's what they need. They need their bullpen to get some rest. Ioana Cespedes will step to the plate with one out. 20 home runs, 58 RBIs. And his swing is a violent swing. We talked about Chris Davis looking effortless when he swings. It is the exact opposite with Cespedes. Well, there's no question. He's not up there looking to punch a ball to right field for a little single. He's trying to jerk it out of the park every time he turns it loose. One ball, one strike here. He 
He's a very strong kid as everybody saw at the All-Star. Fouls this one off. One ball and two strikes. That home run derby. When he ended it with that walk-off home run in the home run derby, I mean, that was in style. You look at his swing. It is, it's ferocious. And the one thing, he's got a very strong arm. He's extremely athletic. But the one thing you'll notice about his swing, and, and pitchers have figured this out to a certain extent. That's why his average is down. He is a dead low ball hitter. Tillman hung him a changeup one pitch ago in the middle of the plate, but it was up, and he cannot get to a ball up. He's a dead low ball hitter. One, two, got him swinging first strikeout of the game for Tillman. Brings us to our first game break. It's time for a Pepsi game break. Here's Greg Anser. Justin, thank you very much. Out in L.A., they get to Ryu in a hurry. Johnny Gomes with two on, one away. That's a three-run shot. It gets better, though. Hey, Justin, I have a feeling my buddy Mitch appreciates this dugout chemistry. 4 nothing Red Sox. Back to appreciates the dugout chemistry, appreciates the beard. Oh, yeah, those are great beards in Boston. Reddick takes the first pitch in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Josh Reddick, 217, 10 home runs, 46 RBIs. That's what's amazing when you go up and down this lineup. You don't see a guy hitting 300. No. And, and that's why I, I think the key for them, they've got to hit when they've got guys in scoring position because they don't have one player on this team that's going to put the team on his back and carry them. They have got to play basically small ball and do everything right. Get a guy on, get him over, get him in. And Reddick bunting against the shift. Tillman, the bare hand, makes the play. Reddick tried to do what everybody always asks. Why don't you bunt against the shift? He didn't get the bunt far enough over. A one, two, three, and he worked by Tillman. Major League Baseball, great times are waiting. Grab some butts. Bottom half of the second here at Camden Yards. And being back at this ballpark and just looking out, it is beautiful. Oh. But I think the warehouse makes this ballpark. Absolutely. It's a gorgeous park. I remember when they, they got it built, it was the talk of baseball. And it's great to see the fan base back here the last couple of years. They've had a lot to cheer about here. And this guy being one of them in Adam Jones. 
Adam Jones 301 27 home runs 94 RBIs and takes the first pitch fastball inside and low from Parker. And you can see the movement Parker's got on his fastball. And then you add in that changeup. He wants to get the low strike call. If he can get the low strike call on his fastball, that makes his changeup that much more effective. 1 0, fouled back, one ball and one strike. Adam Jones had three RBIs in last night's 9 7 victory, including a two run homer. And by the way, this guy has some style. Watching him yesterday before the game, he came out in these pants with shorts pulled over there like fatigues. They look great. Now you got the Evo shield, the black and orange on the ankle. Look at the shoes. There's that There's change, change up. up. That's a, the great equalizer. When you have that pit, look at them shoes. He's got his number on his shin guard. All right. He lives by the theory I did. You either got to look good or play good. And chances are I wasn't going to play good. <laughs> One two Jones to left field Cespedes having some trouble with it able to make the catch. Uh, that's it. The toughest ball for an outfielder to field is, and read is the ball hit directly at him and you could see that that froze Cespedes right there. It probably never came out of the crowd. Was it maybe a knuckleball. It might have been a knuckleball. And a knuckleball hit straight at you is zero fun. So I want to go back to what you said about looking good or playing good. The mullet was looking good. Oh, you're dang right. I was. That was the look back then. Just wanted to confirm. And we called it the curls for the girls or the waves <laughs> for the babes. <laughs> now, AJ Griffin, that's more of like a Ted Nugent look. That that's not a mullet. Weeders off the end of the bat to left field. This a much easier play for Cespedes. Two away. Quickly two up two down here in the second for Jared Parker. And now Nick Markakis steps to the plate. You can see Parker he hadn't even gotten into a sweat yet. And this is how it's been for his last. Couple of handfuls of starts he's throwing the ball exceptionally well for the A's. Coming off his first career complete game. Eight hits one run no walks eight strikeouts against the Mariners. And the first pitch misses to Marcakis. And, and that's a cut fastball right there instead of a sinker, he threw him a cutter to try and get on the hands of Marcakis. 1 0 change up, popped up. Second base, Eric Sogard on the outfield grass makes the catch, and that is a quick 1 2 3 inning. We're through two here at Camden Yards. In the next inning, we'll have some interviews. Stay tuned, it should be some fun.
Top of the third here in Baltimore. Scoreless game. A's and O's. Chris Young leads things off against Chris Tillman. And the first pitch fastball is outside for ball one. Young on the season. 195, 11 home runs, and 34 RBIs. Getting the start in center field here today with Coco Chris dh -ing. And their first strike. One ball and one strike. We're joined now by tomorrow's starter for the Baltimore Orioles, Scott Feldman. Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you joined this team on July 2nd from the Chicago Cubs. What's it like being traded midseason and coming in and try to acclimate yourself to a new club? Uh, you know, it's good. Um, nice to go from uh, sort of out of contention back into the mix here with these guys. And, uh, you know, we've been playing well, so hopefully we can just keep it going. Scotty, I got to ask you, and you kind of touched on it right there. You've been involved in the postseason the last few years, coming from Texas. How excited were you when you got the opportunity to get out of Chicago and come to a team that was going to be have a chance to contend for the postseason? Uh, it's very exciting. You know, um, I, I really enjoyed my time there in Chicago and uh, had some good teammates over there, some good coaches. But, um, you know, I'm happy with where I'm at and uh, the chance to play for the postseason. That's what, you know, we all love to do. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be an exciting next month or so. The 3-2 pitch to Young. Misses inside for a leadoff walk. That'll bring up Eric Sogard again. We are speaking with Scott Feldman, tomorrow's starter for the Baltimore Orioles. He'll be opposed by Sonny Gray for the Oakland A's. Scott, we just showed a graphic. You're a 30th round pick. As a 30th round pick, how does it feel to know that you have pitched and played as long as you have in the major leagues? It feels good. Um, you know, I hope I can play for a few more years. But, uh, you know, I think that a lot of times when you're a late pick, you got to, uh, you know, sort of, um, I don't know, you're not, you're, you, get, you get treated a little differently when I think when you're a first rounder or something like that. So you kind of got to, um, you know, just be on top of your game right from the get-go and try to prove some people wrong and uh, show them that you belong um, in pro ball. Yeah, the 30th round pick, Scott, we can explain to all the people at home, if you're a first round pick, you can go out there and have four or five bad starts. If you're a 30th round pick, you ain't getting four or five bad starts. You're going home. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. And uh, I really sort of bucked the trend there because I had about two starts, and then I got Tommy John surgery. So I'm just thankful that um, the Rangers stuck with me and uh, let me do my rehab and gave me an opportunity once I came back and got healthy. But um, are you guys noticing the hail, or is it just me? <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's a light hail. Yeah, light hail. Let uh, me ask you something about uh, your ex-teammate, now your teammate again, Chris Davis. Did you see all this in Texas, the, the potential for the power when you were there? Absolutely. The potential, I think, is something that's always been there. And uh, with Chris, I think it's just more of an approach that he's, he's sort of matured and uh, uh, kind of knows his strengths, knows his weaknesses, and, and doesn't try to do too much up there. And, um, you know, he came, he came into this organization with uh, sort of a fresh slate and didn't have as much pressure on him and, uh, at the beginning. And they just let him go out there and play. And I think that's really all a guy with that much talent needed was just uh, somebody to show some confidence in him and run him out there for 500 at bats. And, uh, you know, I think he's going to just keep getting better. No balls and one strike here to Kurt Suzuki. Chris Young was almost picked off at first base. The pitch is up high. One ball and one strike. Scott, we got a chance to go into the clubhouse before the game today, and we noticed the pool table, the great lights above the pool table, the ping pong table. Do you participate in this? And, and be honest with us, how good are you? What's your better sport? pool or table tennis ping pong is my better sport but i actually used to think i was pretty good at ping pong until i came here um i guess all that that time away from the table uh didn't really mix too well with all these guys playing every day but um i've been getting my butt whipped pretty good by them but um who's the best you know i've heard that it's jj hardy but i guess he's so good that he he doesn't really play unless it's a special occasion. So I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even seen him yet out there. So he, he uh, won't grace you with that. <laughs> no, I guess you got to You got to really get him. Uh, I think we had some um, some of the junior national champions in the other day, and I think he got on the table for that. Um, but that's pretty much it. You know, he's uh, I think he's too good to, to mess around with any of us scrubs. He's the Jerry Seinfeld of, of pool. I choose not to play. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's what he's going for. Two balls and one strike here to Suzuki with a runner on first and one out top of the third. Again, we are speaking with Scott Feldman, one of the starters for this Baltimore Orioles team. 2-1 inside, and it's three balls and one strike. 
I was recently told that you used to ride a weird bicycle, a one, a unicycle. Is that is that oh, true? Damn, who told you that? <laughs> I have sources, but I will not reveal the sources. Yeah, I'm pretty good on the on the unicycle. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure I'd be bragging about that, Scotty. <laughs> I don't know who told you that. That I've just never, tells I've me actually, you got way too much time on your hands. I've actually never been on the unicycle. I don't, I don't imagine I'd be too good on that. I, I can never skateboard or anything that requires a lot of balance. I, I was never too good at. But you were born in, in Hawaii, so can you surf? Uh, I've attempted it once or twice. Uh, not very good. I'm more of just like a body surf, boogie board type guy. You don't really need too much balance for that. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I was going to say that was kind yeah, of a rhetorical question. Yeah. If you can't skateboard, pretty good chance you can't surf. Yeah, and probably can't ride a unicycle either. Three balls and two strikes here to Suzuki. The runner goes. Swung on and missed. No, oh, the runner geez. caught in a rundown. Roberts. Strikeout. Caught stealing. Scott right. Feldman, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. All right, guys. Thanks for having me. Be good. See you. We head to the bottom half of the third. No score. Oakland and Baltimore. The Oakland Athletics select Sonny Gray, a right-handed pitcher from Vanderbilt University, Nashville, Tennessee. And back here in Baltimore, bottom half of the third, we are joined by Sonny Gray, the starting pitcher for tomorrow's game for the Oakland A's as we're in a 0-0 ball game. And Sonny, thanks for joining us. You hear those words uttered by the commissioner again. What was that feeling like when you got trapped out of Vanderbilt? Oh, it was awesome. It was, uh, you know, it was one of those moments you really dream for. And, uh, you know, fortunate for me, I was, you know, I was able to spend it at home with my family. So, uh, you know, it was a big day. It was, it, was a, it was a fun day. One ball, one strike. The count here to J.J. Hardy leading off the third. Sonny, you got the opportunity to come up here and pitch. And uh, just to let you know, there's not a league higher than this one. You've thrown 25 innings and given up 12 hits. Can you explain the success? Are you locating? Are you overpowering people? What are you doing? Or what are you feeling? Uh, the main thing I've really been trying to do since coming here is not try to change anything. And uh, it's been a, it's, it's, you know, started off, you know, pretty well. And uh, I hope we continue. I just think the main thing is just, just keep staying in the routine and, and not trying to do, not trying to overdo anything. And, uh, 
you know, and, and, and let them let them hit it and let the defense work. You mean like that? Just like that. I throw, but Brendan Moss applies the tag for the first out. I always like to ask this question, and since you are a rookie and you were playing college ball just a couple of years ago, when you came up and you had your major league debut or, or afterwards, was there a moment where you got on the mound and you looked down to the plate and you saw someone hitting and you said, oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm actually pitching the big leagues right now? Yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. Coming out of, I think, I debuted in Pittsburgh out of the bullpen. And uh, coming out, it was, you know, I kind of ran on there and, and it, wasn't, it wasn't so bad. And then you get on the mound and you see, uh, you look around and the stadium is just completely different. That guy. The stadium's just completely different. The you know the fans are, you know, I was in Pittsburgh, so everyone was wearing black and gold, and it was uh, that was the main thing is, is the stadiums and, and the uh, and the fans. Well, you had to be all right with the black and gold. You went to Ben. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. I, said, I looked around and it looked like a home game in college. Hey, speaking of college, I was told that you actually created your own major at Vanderbilt. Is that true? And what was the major? Yeah, we can. Uh, we did. We it's. Um... Flaherty gets into one to right field, and that's gone. Yeah. Ryan Flaherty, with his eighth home run of the year, gives Baltimore the one nothing lead. And that's a pretty good thing when you got a guy like Flair down in the eight hole that has the ability to hit the ball out of the ballpark like that. And nice job, Sonny, by not getting too upset as the other team hit a home run. <laughs> that's it's never a good thing. Well, but uh, no, it was a uh, financial and uh, organizational management, and uh, it was kind of what I was interested in, and, and they allow us to uh, they allow us to do that. Donaldson over by the dugout, runs out of room. That actually hit the wire. I've never seen that happen before. Yeah. Well, I can tell you this, Sonny. If they'd have allowed me to select my major, it probably would have been sleeping and not attending class. <laughs> That's something that uh, a lot of people think thinks playing a sport in college is, but not at Vandy. Not at Vanderbilt at all. No, hey. no, you got to be you, you got to be pretty stacked upstairs uh, in the brain category to attend that school. The Harvard of the South, as I like to call it. Brian Roberts behind the count. No balls and one strike here to Jared Parker. We are speaking with Sonny Gray, who's getting pelted by sunflower seeds. And that's that one, pretty much par for the course. Yeah, that one got me good. Uh, noticed looking at Jared Parker, looking at yourself, the starting pitchers growing mustaches. What's going on there? Yeah, you see it? A little bit. It's, it's uh, a little bit of a sketchy mustache, but it's, it's okay. It's, it's coming in. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it looks like it looks like a football team, Sonny. You got 11 <laughs> on each side. <laughs> hey, it's better than 10. I had 10 last week. But uh, yeah, it was something that uh, that when I got up here, they mentioned doing. So I, uh, you know, of course, I was I was trying my hardest. So how long have you been growing it for? Ever since I got up here to start. So, <laughs> sir, how old are you, Sonny? 23. Uh, don't worry about it, buddy. I didn't even shave till my second year in the big leagues. Hey. We'll I, see. It, it, I had that see-through mustache. It's there. It's just real blonde, so that's that's why you can't see it. That's the ticket. One ball, two strikes here to Brian Roberts. Again, we are speaking with Sonny Gray, tomorrow's starting pitcher for the Oakland A's, who's putting up fantastic numbers. And, Sonny, when you were in college, people compared you to Tim Hudson. You get drafted by the Oakland A's. Hudson came up with the Oakland A's. Was he a guy that you looked at because your, your your size and whatnot and tried to emulate? Yeah, he was a guy, um, he was pitching in Atlanta, and me growing up in Tennessee, it was, uh, that was a team that, you know, that I rooted for, and that was a team that I, uh, you know, that I was, you know, following, and um, and he was a guy that, he's just one of the better pitchers, good, really good athletes, so it was, uh, and I'd heard that from, from a, ever since high school, the little comparison. And he was an SEC guy as well, SEC, playing at yeah. Auburn, and, and everyone who talks about him saying he could really hit, so how's your hitting? I don't know, I haven't hit in a long time, but it's, uh, you know, I could, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> hey, no lying here. <laughs> yeah, I, every, when I got to, to college and everyone was throwing 90, I kind of I kind of shut that one down, but <laughs> it's, it's not fun. I don't like hitting. <laughs> one ball, two strikes here to Roberts, one away in the third. 
and Roberts chases that changeup. And that's a second strikeout of the game for Jared Parker. Sonny, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck tomorrow. Good luck the rest of this season. Thanks, guys. Keep thanks rolling, having. buddy. Thank you. Two away here in the third. And back to the top of the order for Nate McLeod. And, and you see that swing and miss changeup that Jared Parker possesses right there. He's either got them out on their front foot or and foul, pulling it foul, or they are just flat out swinging through it. McLeod flew out to right field his first time up. Shows bunt, pulls it back on the breaking ball. And that's the first time I've seen him break out a slider in this game. Pulled right side off the glove of Moss, and this will be an infield hit from the clock. Yeah, and this is a situation where the first baseman coming off the bag right there, he's got to know the range and where Sogards is playing. If you look, if he goes to the bag, Sogards has that in his back pocket. If Brandon Moss just goes to the bag and knows where Sogards is playing, that's an easy play. You see that a lot nowadays. First baseman want to make more and more plays, but the second baseman can see the signs. He knows what's coming, so he, he's going to kind of creep that way if there's an off-speed pitch coming. And Brandon Moss came up as an outfielder, played most of his career as an outfielder as Manny Machado steps in. And there is a slider taken for a strike. Is it the responsibility of Sogard to almost call off Moss like he's an outfielder saying I got it I got it no in that situation it, it's a reaction out of Moss he has got to check to see right as the pitch is being delivered he's got to kind of glimpse, glimpse over there and see where Sogard is to know okay that's his ball I got to get to the bag go back over to first base McLeod does have good speed 29 of 34 and stolen bases on the year. You know, it's funny. We see those numbers and you think 29 stolen bases. That's a lot of stolen bases. We showed Ricky Henderson before with all those leadoff home runs. Yeah. He'd have 29 by May 1st. Exactly. Uh, I played against Ricky for a long time. And true base stealers, you're not going to stop them. All you can do is try and disrupt their timing. The 0 1 to Machado. Pop foul behind the plate. Coming back this way. And it's 0 and 2. And now they've got him played up the middle and to pull. Sogard's shaded up the middle. It'll be interesting to me to see if they're going to try and get him out away or if they're going to keep coming in on him. The infield will tell you. The 0 2. And the dirt. Check swing. Did he go? He did not, says Jordan Baker at first. One ball and two strikes. Well, that just tells you how good that changeup is. That ball bounced in front of the plate, and he got a check swing out. And people argue about how do you decide if he went? In my opinion, if the bat gets out in front of home plate, he went. One ball, two strikes. McLeod on it first base, two outs here in the third. Throw back over to first. McLeod is in safely. I do enjoy watching Manny Machado. Obviously, you watch it, love watching him in the field because he's so good at third base. But at the plate, there are guys who just exude confidence. He looks comfortable when he's at the plate. Looks well, relaxed. Absolutely. He's quiet. I'm looking at Parker's feet right here for the reason I, that unless he's turned or getting his back foot clear of that rubber, that's a balk because he cannot jump shift like that. You have got to either step off. Yeah, see that that's a balk right there. They're not going to call it very often, but you cannot jump and spin like that. Your left foot has got to go towards first base. Two balls, two strikes. The count here to Machado. 
There it doesn't because he hadn't come set. You can see right there, and, and if that, if he's not set, then it's not a balk. But if he is set and he jumps like that, kind of a jump spin throw, that is a balk. McLeod goes, and Machado swings through that changeup. But Ryan Flaherty, we spoke to Sonny Gray, who went to Vanderbilt. Flaherty went to Vanderbilt too. And he goes deep for the first run of the game. It's 1-0 Baltimore at the end of three. Today's telecast is sponsored by MasterCard, proud supporter of Stand Up to Cancer, and by Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Crab cakes, maybe? We're in Maryland. I'm not a big fan of the crab cakes, but I like the plain crab. The good jumbo lump crab meat? Oh, yeah. Coco Crisp. Leading off here in the fourth. Takes the first pitch inside for ball one. And Tillman's been doing a good job. He's he's been changing speeds on on his first pitch. He's been throwing his breaking ball. That was a changeup right there. He's not getting into a rhythm on what he's throwing these guys and what he's starting them off with. Got a 2-0 count again on Coco Crisp, who you don't think of as a home run hitter, but can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Crisp pulls it foul down the line, and that's a changeup. He's. I'm starting to see exactly what Buck was talking about. Tillman's not going to give in. In that situation, you can easily give in and throw a fastball, but he didn't. He, he trusted the fact that he get his changeup over, and you saw how far out in front Crisp was. And that's on a 2-0 count. He throws that changeup. He's already had three 2-0 counts in this game, and he comes back with a changeup on the outside corner. It's two and two. You know, Buck was saying before the game that if he has all three pitches, he can dominate. If he has two, he can win. Well, so far today, his fastball and his changeup have been the two that he's got. 2-2. Two -two. In the air right field, Marcakis going over in front of the warning track. Under it makes the catch, one away. This Wednesday, UFC Fight Night on Fox Sports 1 brings you the welterweight rematch you've been waiting for between Carlos Condit and Martin Campman. Plus, a match between Donald Cerrone and Rafael Dos Anos. Live from Indianapolis, UFC Fight Night this Wednesday at 8 p.m. only on Fox Sports 1. One out now for Jed Lowry. 
And Larry takes a change up, puts it back in the center field for a one out single. Speaking of Fox Sports 1, I don't know about you, but I've certainly been watching a lot of it. If you don't know what channel it's on, it is available on all major cable and satellite providers. Go to foxsports1.com to find out your channel. Here are some of the major cable providers and what channels you can find Fox Sports 1. Time Warner in Charlotte, it's 1512 in HD. You're too busy in studio all the time. I understand. Yeah, I, I, I spend so much time on TV, I don't get a chance to watch it. But there, Tillman has kind of fallen into a, a pattern of throwing change-ups. And, and that first pitch change-up got jumped. Donaldson grounded into the 6-4-3 double play to end the first inning. And, and this is a guy that Tillman has had trouble getting out in the past. He was three for three coming into the game. He got the ground ball double play. He's looking for the ball down. He wants to get the ball down. And, and that's not the pitch he's looking to throw right there. You know, you look at Josh Donaldson at the plate. It's not often anymore you see a guy bat with that close stance. Well, and you see, that's a mistake by Tillman and had Donaldson stayed on the ball and stayed closed he would have driven that ball out of right field but he didn't he kind of his hips kind of flew open and he tried, kind of pulled off the ball this should this pitch shouldn't be anywhere near the strike zone it's not and it's one ball and two strikes now he's got all different kinds of ways he can go here he can try and get command of his breaking ball and throw, throw that wipeout curve ball that he has. He can go to his changeup or he can elevate his fastball in the middle of play. What would you go with? I would elevate my fastball in the middle of play right at the top of Weeder's mat. It looks good. They have to swing at it if it's in the middle and they cannot hit it up there. One two fouled back went with a fastball again the way he throws a ball high to low. If it's in the middle and it's up, they cannot. Uh, the hitter cannot trust it. It's not going to have that high to low tilt on it, and, and they swing through it. He did it to uh, Cespedes earlier. Infield yeah. double play depth here with Donaldson at the plate. Runner on first, one out. Here's the curveball, and it's taken for a ball. That's a pretty good job of hitting right there by Donaldson to recognize that that breaking ball is going to be down and out of the zone. I'd like to see him go right back to the breaking ball again and see if he. Because he hasn't shown that he trusts it. They're going with a fastball away. And it's right out in front of home plate. Weeders. Picks it up after a slight bobble. You could see the frustration on Donaldson right there. Down to second goes Larry, but two away. I think there's probably just as much frustration on Weeder's part because he could have had a double play out of this ball had he been able to pick it up cleanly. And look at that ball. That's barely on the plate. And for those of you at home that don't know, the plate is in fair territory. And a grown man just hit a ball an inch and a half. Look like some of my drives on the golf course. <laughs> Two away here, Brandon Moss. Batch the runner in scoring position. And Mitch, this is one of your keys. Drive in these guys when you have a chance. And this is where Tillman's got to be smart. He's got Cespedes on deck, a right-hander. He struck him out the first time up. Moss is a, a power-hitting left-hander. You don't want to make a mistake in this situation to him. This is one of those unintentional, intentional walk times in a game. A broken bat, flare in the infield. J.J. Hardy at second base will make the catch to end the inning. No runs on one hit, one man left on. Chris Davis will lead things off in the fourth for the Orioles.
One nothing Orioles lead the A's bottom half of the fourth. Justin Kutcher alongside Mitch Williams. Chris Davis will lead things off and Davis struck out looking his first time up. But his numbers this year pretty much in any other year. He'd be the front runner for the MVP. But there's this guy named Miguel Cabrera who's threatening to win back to back triple crowns. Well. In his first at bat. Justin I honestly think he's gotten to the point where he thinks maybe pitchers are not going to attack him. First pitch swinging here lost one to left field. Cespedes going over towards the line to make the catch one pitch one out. We saw an awkward play last half inning. Listen to Fielding Colbert's explanation. It's that it's a weird play that it's one of the only places on the field that being that he's got a right to run. And you've got a right to field it that you, you, have to try to you, avoid field it. you well you you allow for that little bit of contact as long as as long as he's trying to get to first base. Field in the country boy. And that is a great explanation right there because there's no interference. The ball sitting on the plate. He does have the right to run to first. Adam Jones takes the first pitch fastball low and outside for ball one. Jones lined out to left field his first time up. You know, but you talked about Chris Davis thinking he's not going to get a pitch to hit. You've got Adam Jones hitting behind you. I mean, yeah. it's not as if teams want to go after Adam Jones very often. Well, no, but it's a right on right situation. Isn't it? In Davis's first at bat, first pitch was middle, middle. He didn't offer at it. And then the pitch he struck out looking was the ball that he drives out of left center field. And, and Parker didn't throw him anything but fastballs and then started him off in that at bat. With a fastball at 92 that Davis got himself out on basically. He's seen four pitches and he's made two outs. One ball, one strike here to Jones. Down low in the dirt. Two balls and a strike. You are right about Adam Jones, though. I mean, he's got protection behind him, but he's also got 46 homers. 46 homers and 117 RBIs. That might make some pitchers a little tentative. 2 1 foul back. Two balls and two strikes. And I speak in, I'm speaking of Chris Davis, obviously. You talk about that 3 4 combination, though, in Detroit with Cabrera and Fielder. Yes, that's more dangerous, but look at the RBIs here with these three, four guys 117 and 94. Yeah. And it's August 24th. You can't argue. I mean, you, you look at the the production that the Orioles have gotten out of their three, four, it's every bit as potent as Detroit's. Miguel Cabrera, look at, look at those numbers 356, 41 home runs, 126 RBIs. You think. He's going to catch Davis in the home run category. In my opinion, yes, because I, the American League East has a little better pitching in it than the Central does. And when you get to September, you're playing a lot of inner uh, division. Well, divisional. I have I struggle with some words <laughs> in the dictionary. You, you're playing in your division a lot the last month of the season. So Chris Davis is going to be facing, I, I think, better pitching than Miguel Cabrera will be. Three balls, two strikes. The count here to Jones. One away, bottom half of the fourth, one nothing. Orioles leading the A's after winning 9 7 last night. And this is a critical series for both teams. 3 2 changeup. Got him swinging. Strikeout number four for Parker. And speaking of the Tigers, we talked about all those guys. Let's check back in with Greg Amsterdam for an update. Just we were talking about Harvey versus Scherzer. Go watch this. Max Scherzer. With the bat in his hand, driving in a run. The score is 2 0. Tiger Scherzer, three innings, one hit, six strikeouts already. But 13 career hits for Max Scherzer. In case you're keeping score, Justin, that's 10 more than the great Mitch Williams. But guess what? No homers for Max. Mitch went yard, didn't you, Mitch? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that also 13 more hits than Justin Verlander has in his career? I'm not sure. Does he not I have. I don't think Verlander has a hit. Oh. That's the big joke about him. There's some some pitchers that just look wrong with a bat in their hand. And, and we heard Sonny Gray talk earlier about how he didn't like hitting at all. Weeders 
out in front of that one. Skies on a shallow right. Coming in is Reddick to make the catch. And a 1-2-3 inning word for Parker. We're through four. It's 1-0 Baltimore. Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by Budweiser. A view from the warehouse. Love that warehouse out there. Whenever I see it, I think back to the home run derby in Ken Griffey Jr. Add on backwards. Jonas Cespedes to face Chris Tillman leading off here in the fifth. Takes the first pitch for a ball. And, and this is one guy in the lineup that... You hear people, oh, pitching coaches say you got to work down in the zone, down in the zone. This is a guy you do not work down to. Change up, one ball and one strike. I mean, that pitch right there is right down the middle. And he struggles with it. You stay out of the strike zone with him. He's so strong. But that's a 90 mile an hour fastball that's just barely elevated right there, Justin. He, he cannot get to it. Why? Why can't he? It's just anything you watch his hands. You see any hitter that's got high hands, low ball hitter. Hitters will tell you what their strengths are by their stance and where they where they hold their hands. Now just go a notch higher. You see, oh, walk the ladder. What is a guy who, who keeps his hands low like J.J. Hardy? What's J.J. Hardy would be a high ball hitter. And the guy who keeps it midway just can hit both. That, that like Miguel Cabrera, you, you throw and get small. <laughs> now he's setting him up for the breaking ball. He just threw him a fastball up and out of the zone. Now it wouldn't surprise me to either see him go back to that changeup or throw him that breaking ball out of the zone away. The 2-2. Two -two. Got him with a high fastball. Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball, is celebrating a new season for new memories. For your chance to win a community field makeover and an all-new 2014 Impala, visit ChevyBaseball.com. Three strikeouts in the game here for Tillman, two of them against Cespedes. And you see that anytime the ball is elevated in the middle of the plate, it's very hard for hitters to lay off that pitch. The shift is on for Reddick. Foul ball. Back towards us. No balls in one strike.
right down the middle. 0 and 2. And that's a fastball at 89. It actually looked like a changeup out of his hand. Now he's got four pitches to do whatever he wants with right here to get to get ready to chase. In the dirt, one ball and two strikes. And, and Buck pretty much hit it on the uh, the nail on the head in our, our pregame meeting with him. He's going to have. He hopes he can have two of his pitches, two of his three pitches working. And so far today, it's been his fastball and his changeup. His curveball has not been there for him. One, two, changeup, got in the chase. Back to back strikeouts, two away here in the fifth. Now will bring up Chris Young, who walked his first time up. Both pitchers using their change up exceptionally well. It's to the point now where you could actually tell them it's coming and they're not hitting. First pitch change up for a strike. Mitch, obviously, you're a very good pitcher. You threw hard. If you're coaching kids today, what would be the pitch that you would teach them besides a fastball? A change up. Uh, the first thing I would, I would want to do mechanically, you want to get kids sound when they're very young. I do coach a 10 year old AAU team that my son is a part of, and I teach the mechanics of the position first and don't worry about the secondary pitches. But I hate it when coaches try and teach young kids at 10 or 12 years old how to throw a breaking ball, it's unnecessary. It, you teach them to throw whether it's just the old. Palm, grab it with all five fingers and throw a change up. Learn that first. One, two, Young yanks the change up foul. Stays one ball and two strikes. So if you're going to go with a change up, how difficult is that circle change to teach? Well, I can, it's easy to teach. It ain't easy to throw. <laughs> I can tell you that. I never could throw it. Uh, uh, I taught a lot of kids how to throw a split finger, not a fork ball. There's a difference between between a fork ball and a split finger. This is a fork ball. You see there's no seams on either finger. I teach kids to throw a split where there's a seam on this finger, a seam on this finger here, and you just throw a fastball. And the thought process is the same. You don't have to think, oh, I'm throwing a changeup. Well, Chris Young skies on the left field. Nate McClough is under it. And another one, two, three inning work by Tillman. We're through four and a half. It's one nothing Orioles.
Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Bottom half of the fifth here at Camden Yards in Baltimore. one nothing. Orioles lead the A's on a solo home run by Ryan Flaherty. It'll be Nick Marcakis, J.J. Hardy, and Flaherty due up here in the fifth against Jared Parker. Marcakis popped out to second his first time up. First pitch fastball in the outside corner for a strike. And Parker's done a nice job of getting ahead with pitches that are on the edges of the plate. He's not just pouring it down the middle of the plate. Steps off, wants Suzuki to go through the signs again. Outside, one ball and one strike. It's funny, we were talking about the changeup. You know, growing up, being in Little League, yeah. you thought a changeup was just make a face that you're going to throw it so hard and slow your arm speed down and just lob it over. Yeah. Arcakis lobs one in the shallow center for a base hit. That's the old top spin lob. That's a great thing about this game. Parker actually hit his spot, did exactly what he wanted to do, and Marcakis was able to get the ball into left field. This is the circle change. This grip right here. And I never could grasp it because it, to me I had to slow my arm down. This is a split finger where you've got seams and you just throw a fastball and the key to any of them is staying on top of it to get that downward trajectory. I think that Parker is throwing both. I think the 83 mile an hour thing that we're calling a slider I actually think is a split. I think he throws two different kinds of changes. J.J. Hardy takes the fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Now why do you feel and I agree with you, but why is the changeup such an important pitch for, for kids to learn? Because you, you're you never going to get to the big leagues and stay there throwing one pitch. Believe me, I tried. I had to develop a second pitch. I ended up developing a slider. And if you don't, you, you're just simply not going to stay here. I mean, the, the old saying, it, it's easy to get to the big leagues. It's hard to stay. There, there's a lot of truth in that. In order to stay up here and keep pitching and have a long career at it, you have to have secondary pitches. And a changeup, anything you can deliver out of the same arm slot with the same arm speed. And you see what both these guys, Tillman and Parker, have been able to do with their changeup. They've gotten a lot of outs today with it. Hardy. Skies went to left field. Easy play for Cespedes. Marcakis goes back to first, one away here in the fifth. Really, if you think about this game with, with these two guys pitching, we've seen what? One ball hit hard, two balls maybe? No, yeah, but I mean the ball Flaherty hit was hit hard. Other than that, I can't think of another ball that's been smoked. Adam Jones hit that knuckleball line drive to left field, but it was a knuckleball. It didn't even seem like it was hit that hard. Yeah. They both don't all pitching is pitching is just another word for controlling bat speed. And that's all both these guys have done today. If you can control the hitter's bat speed, you can control the hitter. One away for Flaherty hit the home run back in the third inning. Fastball is outside for ball one. For a young kid, Parker has really developed over the last two years into a really solid starter. Good change up and that again we're showing his velocity right 80 miles per hour on the change up. The fastball's only 91. You don't have to throw 98 99. No you don't. And, and that's the straight change right there and we have seen him throw a split earlier in the game I think I don't think he throws a slider I'm I think that split is his third pitch but you look at the arm speed on that I mean the hitter swinging at arm speed and the fact that the ball coming out of his hand looks exactly like his fastball there's just 11 or 12 miles an hour difference in the velocity 
That's a two seamer grip right there in his hand. A two seam fastball grip. A look back at first base. Marquez is 0 for 2 on the year in stolen bases. Both pitchers so far are very efficient with their pitch count. Outside with a fastball, two balls and a strike. And you know, for him to throw a split finger out of the stretch, starting with the ball in his hand to have a two seam grip on the ball. It's hard for me to imagine that he doesn't tip that split by digging for it in his glove when he comes puts his hands together. How cognizant are pitchers about doing that about tipping those pitches. Oh. Trust me we know hitters look for anything. They they will pick up on anything. So I always grip I threw a split and I gripped every pitch in a split because I could go into my glove and go to my slider or my fastball without tipping anything. Three balls a strike here to Flaherty. Good hitters count. I wouldn't be surprised here to see a changeup. Well, there's a, the two seamer grip again. And if I'm Flaherty, I'm probably sitting changeup right here. He's got this fastball grip. A cue shot tipped. And it's the shortstop Larry who will make the play to first. That's a 1 6 3 put out. Down to second base goes Marquecas. Two outs in the inning. The, the sad part right there is, Justin, I learned a lesson from Charlie Huff a long time ago. Don't leap, dive, or lunge on the mound. Had he not jumped for that ball, that's a double play ball. How do you fight that natural reaction? It's a, it's, a, it's a reaction, absolutely. But it was ingrained in me, uh, my rookie year by Charlie Huff. Don't leap, dive, or lunge. If you lunge one way or another, chances are it's going to be right to a middle infielder. And I don't think I made six fielding plays my entire <laughs> career. Unless it was a bunt down the third baseline where I was falling into it. I made two behind my back by accident that I just flailed at and they went in my glove. Two outs now for Brian Roberts who struck out his first time up hit a grand slam last night. This is a luxury right now for Buck Showalter. You get a guy like Brian Roberts back in the lineup. He's playing second base switch hitter. And he's batting number nine. No question. I mean this is a guy that's usually a top of the order guy. He's had a hard time staying healthy for, for the Orioles over the years but. To be here that long, he is a good ball player. It's just had bad luck staying healthy. You think about Brian Roberts, the last full healthy season he had was 2009. Played 159 games in 2009. 2010, 59 games. 11, 39. 2012, 17. 2013, he's played in 45 games. Yeah, I mean that's just got to it's got to be frustrating to the organization, but more so for Bryant. Outside with a fastball, his last 11 games, he's hitting 333 with 11 RBIs, four extra base hits, the grand slam last night. Well, and this is where I would look for Parker to go to that off-speed pitch. You don't want to throw a, a, a little guy like Roberts something hard in this situation. He doesn't, he's not doesn't have a home run swing. There's that split. I think that's a split finger right there. This is last night coming up. Big base is loaded and he delivers. Yeah, and see that's what happens when you get those little guys that have short swings. I learned that real quick in the National League. I came over from the American League where they had big swingers big home run hitters. You could throw the ball by him. And the first fastball I threw to Ozzie Smith, he almost took my lips off. I said, okay, these little slap hitters, they can hit that. 3 1, chase the high fastball, 3 and 2. Now he's gone high fastball here, and he got him to swing through that. He is absolutely set up for that straight change on the 3 2 pitch. And, and Parker has the confidence to throw. 
What will Suzuki put down? I can't well, read the sequence. Well, if they're going first sign, it, he wanted a fastball, went to a changeup. Apparently, Jared Parker couldn't read it either, because he just called out his catcher. And don't forget, Kurt Suzuki just came back over to the Oakland A's a couple days ago, so he hasn't worked with these guys. He right. was with the Nationals. Kurt Suzuki is a hard worker behind the plate. Over a hundred years of catchers for the A's. And there's Suzuki on the list. Three balls, two strikes. Yeah, they're not even putting a sign down. I think he's throwing the straight change here. Yep. It's in the dirt. Roberts works the walk. And I, I think Roberts is looking for that the entire way. Why? Because he, he knows that Parker has confidence in that pitch. And in a 3-2 count, a hitter can't take anything close. So if you're looking, you're going to eliminate fastball from your mind, you can recognize that that ball is going to be in the dirt as a changeup. Nate McLeod had the infield single his last time up. One for two. Two away here in the fifth. One nothing. Baltimore leading Oakland. And the first pitch fastballs in there for a strike going one. You look at those numbers. He, he's obviously comfortable against Garrett Parker. There's some hitters that are extremely comfortable. See the ball well out of certain pitchers hands. The 0 1. Goes outside with the fastball misses too far outside one ball and one strike. And this is where Nate's got to look for anything. He, he can't go up there and, and look for a pitch. He's got to look in a zone and try and hit the ball where it's pitched. You got runners in scoring position with two outs. Change up is outside two balls and a strike. Parker gave up a leadoff single to Marcakis. Hardy flew out to left, then a 1 6 3 put out. A walk to Roberts. First and second, two outs. And McLeod ahead in the count, two and one. Down low with a fastball, three balls and one strike. Well, now McLeod has to look in one zone. This is what we call a cripple count. You look in one zone and one zone only, and if it's not there, you're not swinging. McLeod this year against Oakland is 10 for 21. Machado's on deck. He's been struggling. The 3 1. Pull to right field. Reddick going over will make the running catch to end the inning. No runs on one hit. Two men left on. We head to the sixth. 1 0 Orioles.
Eric Sogard will lead things off here in the sixth, and he's a man that I like because, well, he wears glasses. Yeah, I started wearing glasses when I was 15 years old. Um, just I started getting a little worse, so I got them checked out and needed glasses. And, you know, I tried the contact route also, but, you know, I never saw as well as I did with glasses. So it was funny because I would actually wear contacts for school, and then when it was baseball practice, I'd, I'd put my glasses on. I just, I see a lot better with glasses and, you know, I always stuck with them. And you know what? I see better with glasses, too. I like it better. I can't say anything about it. I, I obviously see better with glasses also, but I have never seen anyone wear that type of glasses on a baseball field. Ever. Ever. Uh, I've seen the Chris Sabo-looking goggles. The Rex Specs. Yeah. I, I sported them. Little League all the way through, through high school. But Sogard looks like... He can not only hit you a gapper, field the ground ball, turn the double play, and on, in between all that, do your taxes. Why do you think I wear my glasses? To fool people. Well, it doesn't make me look any smarter. <laughs> I can tell you that. One ball, two strikes here to Sogart. And he looks at strike three. That was a quick one. Strikeout number five for Tillman. And you said you've never seen anybody wear glasses. Well, here's some proof that we have seen some guys over the course of history wearing some specs. Well, yeah, that's. <laughs> well, they didn't have the cool stuff back then. And, and Reggie's, those were the tinted ones. Look at Jason Worth. Holy cow. Kind of looks the same as he does right now, right? Yeah, just like him. <laughs> One out now for Kurt Suzuki. And that first pitch curveball. So Jason Worth back in 97 and Jason Worth today. Same guy. What was that movie with Tom Hanks? Castaway? Yeah. <laughs> what, Wilson was the beach ball? Yeah. Wilson was the beach ball. I like the glasses that Sogard has. It, it's definitely a different look. I, I know even the glasses I wear in the studio fog up. I don't know how you play it a sport in regular glasses and not have them get fogged up because he's much cooler. He doesn't sweat like you sweat. That's got to be it. No balls and two strikes that count here to Suzuki. If you're going to wear those you might as well get some Harry Carey glasses. Those big old things. Then you can't fit them underneath the hat. So far today, Tillman's been exactly what Buck Showalter is needing to be. He's been extremely efficient. He's worked ahead. And he caught Sogard looking for something else because that was a 91 mile an hour fastball right down the middle to punch him out. Now he's ahead one and two in, in, in the count to Suzuki. Foul back, staying alive is Suzuki. Tillman has struck out three of the last four guys. He struck out five in the game. It'll be interesting to see if he goes back to that breaking ball. He threw that get me over breaking ball first pitch for a strike, but he has not had command of that pitch all day. Another one, two. Pulled. That is a fair ball inside the line down the left field line. Suzuki will head for second. He will be in there with a one out stand up double. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by Taco Bell. Sometimes you gotta live boss. And by AT&T, helping you do what you do even better. AT&T, rethink possible. Runner in scoring position here for Oakland with one out in the sixth. The 12th double of the year for Suzuki. And to the top of the order we go with Coco Crisp. And this leads back to the keys of the game for me they they have to hit with runners in scoring position in my opinion these are the guys that can get it done Lowry and Coco Crisp they're not big swingers they're going to put the ball in play for the most part Tillman's got to try and get them out on their front foot and get them to hit the ball in the air just the second at bat with a runner in scoring position in this game for Oakland 
Good pitch. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes to Crisp, who has flown out twice, once to center, once to right. In the best case scenario, you go, you get the punch out here. But if he tries to bury a breaking ball or a change up and the ball does get by Weeders, the great thing about Weeders, he's huge. If I'm a pitcher, I'm throwing, I wouldn't hesitate to throw anything in the dirt. He's huge and he's a gold glove winner. 0 2 is pulled. Davis, the backhand play, flips to Tillman covering. They get the out at first. Down the third goes Suzuki. We're going to look at pitch by pitch. Here's the Coco Chris fastball. Just get ahead. Then he goes another fastball down, which is really good. And then throws a breaking ball, which I think caught too much of the plate in an 0-2 count. Chris Davis makes a nice play on it and gets the out. Now this is where Tillman's got to bear down. Tillman, his fourth attempt at his 15th win of the season. He's 14 and 4 on the year. We'll face Jed Lowry, who's one for one, a walk and a single, with a runner on at third and two outs. And that first pitch fastball misses inside for ball one. And Tillman's got to make a decision here. He, he's got a guy standing on deck in Donaldson that coming into today was three for three. Today he's 0 for two. And a guy at the plate is having a pretty good year in Lowry, and he's left handed. I would take my chances with Donaldson. And that's the reason why yes. Lowry comes through. Markakis comes up throwing a second to cut off by Roberts. An RBI double by Jed Lowry, and we're tied at one. Yeah, that's exactly why I would have gone ahead and intentionally, unintentionally walked him. You see that? To a left-hander, down and in is a nitro zone. The A's come through, as you said, one of their keys with a runner in scoring position. And they've got another runner in scoring position in two outs with Josh Donaldson coming up. So far today, he's grounded into a double play and hit a ball uh, an inch and a half in front of the plate. Two out runs. That's a, that's where games are won and lost. First pitch curveball in there for a strike. And that's just a get me over curveball. And that's it's a great pitch first pitch because no hitter wants to hit a breaking ball first pitch. They're all sitting on dead red. Ball in the outside corner at 94 from Tillman. No balls and two strikes to Donaldson. And it'll be interesting now to see what he does. Does he go back to that curveball? I would elevate the fastball. He's, he just showed you he's got 94. If he can elevate his fastball in the middle of the plate right here, Donaldson can swing through. But he's been unbelievable runners in scoring position for this team this year. Five strikeouts on the day for Tillman. Looking for number six. The 0 2. Ground ball, first base. Davis will toss to Tillman. That'll do it here in the inning. What a two out RBI double by Jed Lowry has tied this game up at one as we go to the bottom half of the sixth.
becomes just the third pitcher in MLB history to win 19 of his first 20 decisions in a single season. Off to a nice start. Five innings, one hit. 15 outs recorded, nine via strikeout. It's 2 nothing Tigers in L.A. John Lester's pretty good, too, facing the Dodgers, the hottest team in baseball, best team since the All-Star break. Five innings, one hit, no runs, five strikeouts. 4 nothing Red Sox in the sixth. Justin Mitch, back to you guys in Baltimore. All right, thanks, Greg. Last night it was the Red Sox being blanked by the Dodgers. Today it's the Dodgers getting blanked by the Red Sox. And here Manny Machado will lead things off. And first pitch swinging lines run down the left field line. This will one hop the wall. Cespedes can't make the play clean. And Machado will hold up that second base for leadoff double. His 44th double of the year. And just his fifth since the All-Star break. And this ball was smoked. What you were talking about earlier in the game, Justin, about a guy that just does not look like he gets bound up. He's not overmatched by the situations he's in. He's very calm. You see guys like Puig that come up and they're very excitable. And this kid is just very confident in what he does and that he doesn't exude it. All right, so we also talked about Chris Davis not feeling like he's going to get a pitch to hit. You've got first base open tie game in the sixth inning. Are you pitching to him here? No, I'm not. I'm going to put him on and take my chance of making a pitch to Adam Jones trying to get a ground ball double play out of him. Parker's first pitch is inside for ball one. Now, Chris Davis in this game is over two of the strikeout looking in a fly out to left. You almost wonder if this is him kind of lulling Oakland into pitching to him and then just rifles one kind of like Manny Ramirez back in the day. Well, there were definitely hitters that set pitchers up. I played with one, one of the best in Ryan Sandberg. But I, I think Davis has had pitches to hit in both his previous at bats. He's just not gotten to it. Two balls, no strikes. The count here to Davis. Bottom half of the sixth inning, 1 1 ball game with Adam Jones on deck. A leadoff double by Manny Machado on the first pitch of the inning. Broken bat flare going back is Lowry. Lowry on the outfield grass makes the catch for the first out. And that's a one thing in that situation, a 2 0 count on a fastball in, you expect a guy like Davis to turn on that ball and ended up cutting in on him and jammed him. It's a good, really good pitch by Parker. When you've been looking at sinkers all day and then he cuts it on you, you see this ball right at the last minute, cut in on him and get in on his hands. A big out for Jared Parker now faces Adam Jones. Doesn't get a whole lot easier. Jones 0 for 2, lined out to left and struck out his last time up. At the very least, you wanted to see Davis get Machado to third base with less than two outs, and that didn't happen. But Machado runs well enough that any base hit he's going to score on. First pitch fastball is low and inside for ball one to Adam Jones. These two guys today, Tillman and Parker, basically throwing the exact same game. Fastballs, change ups. In the dirt, good stop by Suzuki. Two balls and no strikes. The Orioles, three, four, five hitters Chris Davis, Adam Jones, Matt Wieters. A combined 0 for 7 with two strikeouts and five flyouts. Well, and, and he's put it. Parker's put himself in a position now in a cripple count that you you can't give in. You you can't come back with a fastball and just say, okay, I'm going to pour a fastball in the middle of the plate. Adam Jones is hunting a fastball right now. Inside, three balls and no strikes. The switch hitting catcher Matt Wieters is on deck. I don't think there's any way in the world Jones doesn't have the green light right here. Now 
Hot swinging, taking, he takes ball four. Four pitch walk to Jones, first and second, one out for Weeders. Jared Parker, 15 consecutive starts without a loss. He's won seven in a row. He had a stretch of six straight no decisions between June 23rd and July 28th. Coming off his first career complete game against the Mariners. When he allowed eight hits, one run, no walks, and eight strikeouts. Weeders pulls the first pitch foul. Well, in this this is not that bad a situation for Parker to be in because his change up to left handers is a little bit more effective than it is to right handers because you want that ball going down and away from the left hander rather than down and into a right hander. So I think he's probably more comfortable right now throwing to Weeders than he was to Jones. But he's still he's put himself in a position where he can't make a mistake. There's the changeup. Way out in front was Weeders, 0 oh 2. And I think this is the split right here. Yeah, that, that's a split finger. How many guys do you know who throw both a changeup and a split? I, I, don't, I don't know any. I mean, unless I'm really, really wrong, one is a split and one's just a straight change. 0-2 ground ball. Parker goes to second for one. Good slide by Jones. No throw by Lowry. That may be one of those plays where you have to circle and go back because that could be the difference. Absolutely. And, and that's a, a tremendous job by Jones because you've got a guy at the plate that doesn't run well in Weeders and he's busting it out of the box. But you look at the effort Jones makes to make sure he can he really didn't even get his feet to Lowry. He just head, headed right at him and affected the way he could make the throw or not make it. And you know what? That to me is Buck Showalter baseball. Oh, yeah. You Teaches know, these guys the fundamentals. There's discipline. Makes them play the right way. Yeah, and we talked about that in the open about him bringing structure and what he expects. And... These guys now, they, they have a direction, they have a way they have to play the game, or they're simply not going to play. First pitch change up to Marcakis is taken for a ball. Marcakis singled his last time up, one for two. Bottom half of the sixth inning, 1-1 one, one ball game. Justin Kutcher and Mitch Williams with you here on Fox. August 24th, and this game has big implications for both the A's and the Orioles. Machado let off of the double. He's on at third. Weeders reaching the fielder's choice. Change up in there, one on one. And that's that's a change up that's not in a good spot. And this is the guy, Marcakis. There's only one other guy. Well, he might be tied right now for the most singles in the American League. He hasn't had the power numbers, but this guy is one of the most underrated players in baseball. On the left field line out of play. One ball and two strikes. And, and that's a fastball that he's late on because he's guarding against that changeup. That's amazing. No extra base hits in his last 123 at bats. That's hard to imagine. I mean, this is a heck of a ball player. Buck said, said he had been struggling lately. One two in the air left field. Cespedes going back, still going back on the track, makes the catch, and Parker gets out of the inning. A leadoff double goes for naught. We're all tied through six. Fox Base will return to Baltimore after work for local Fox Station.
Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Budweiser. We go to the seventh here at Camden Yards. Hey, look at that, an Oregon Ducks fan. We'll have the Oregon Ducks next Saturday on Fox Sports 1. No, I grew up up in Oregon. Brandon Moss takes the first pitch changeup for a strike from Chris Tillman. Oh, that's that get me over curveball that we were looking for. And I don't think, uh, based on the last couple innings, I don't think Jared Parker's going to be in there much longer. His changeup starting to get up. Now Tillman's getting into this. He's into the seventh. They've both thrown the ball well. This is why I don't believe in pitch count. Because on any given day, you can go out there and throw 130 pitches and feel fine. Some days you can go out there and throw 80 pitches and be tired. Moss going the other way, fouls it away. One ball and two strikes. The shift is on once again with Moss at the plate. And again, it's Manny Machado going from third base all the way into shallow right field, the rover position. Well, that's because he's got the strongest arm of all the infielders. Moss gets into one to right center field. But Marcakis goes over and Jones calls him off for the first out. Let's go around Camden Yards and take a look at the Fox Sports 1 fan cam. Brent, brought to you by Fox Sports 1. Available on all television providers. Go to Fox sports1.com to find out what channel on your provider. One away now for Yohannes Cespedes. 0 for 2 has struck out both times swinging. On high fastballs. We'll see if he throws him a get me over breaking ball or goes right at him with fastballs again. First pitch fastball as Brian Roberts moves over to the shortstop side of second base. So the only guy on the right side of the infield now is Chris Davis. And outside one and one. That's a one place he's got a chance to get to a fastball of it up and out away from him. Anything middle in and it's up. He just cannot get his the head of the bat to. One and two. So is this something where they have to address it in the offseason or do you just say hey he's had success in the past. Let him stay with it. Well, as a pitcher, I'm, there's certain guys that I knew just couldn't catch up. And Tillman is seeing he cannot catch up to a fastball above his belt. Fouled off the foot, stays one and two. And in that situation, to me, throwing him that breaking ball in the strike zone is foolish because all you're doing is speeding his bat up. Chili Davis, the batting coach for the Oakland A's. My ex Rumi, one of the really, really good guys in all of baseball. And a tremendous hitter. Switch hitter. One two is foul back. If I'm not mistaken, Chili Davis in 1999, when he was playing for the Yankees, Pedro Martinez, I think, threw a one hitter. The one hit was a home run to Chili Davis. That doesn't surprise. And it was like 17 strikeouts by Pedro in that game. Well, Chili could hit. I played with him for a couple of months in, in Kansas City. Cespedes strikes out for the third time today. Sixth strikeout of the game for Tillman. We're, we're going to take a look now at the two shifts at the Orioles. This this one here is for Moss. And then I want to see you spell Cespedes on that. Okay. I, I can do that. <laughs> and this one here is for Cespedes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand. I honestly, I don't understand the shift on Cespedes because when a guy's late, you don't play him to pull. Well, we've got another shift on for Reddick, and this time it's Roberts in the shallow right field, and Machado is the only guy on the left side of the infield. And this is you've got to have like a wristband to figure out who has to go where on these shifts. Two balls and no strikes to Reddick who's 0 for 2 struck out his last time up. Excuse me three balls and no strikes. You don't want to give in here. Wow. Last ball right there he was taken. Yeah. 
I'll be really surprised if he gets another fastball in this at bat. Didn't get it there. There's that curveball in. And I think Tillman's figuring out he doesn't have to have his wipeout curveball to be effective with it. He's get this is just a get me over breaking ball. That right there, that's doesn't have a lot of bite to it. It's just something off speed that's got, got some down tilt to it. Great save, got him swinging. Another one, two, three for Tillman. Today's telecast presented by Budweiser is sponsored by Just For Men Auto Stop, the foolproof way to get rid of gray. And by Chevrolet, find new roads. The Just For Men Auto Stop foolproof stat, the Orioles in the seventh inning or later this year. Second in home runs in all of Major League Baseball. Fourth in runs, fourth in batting average. And here in the seventh, the bottom third of the order, J.J. Hardy, Ryan Flaherty, Ryan Roberts to face Jared Parker. And the reason I say Parker, I don't think is long for this game. He did go throw a complete game his last time out. Hardy first pitch swinging. Lost one to left field. Cespedes over by the line now in foul territory for the catch. In his last two innings, he's thrown 15 pitches, seven balls and eight strikes. And then his... The previous inning was 22 pitches, 12 balls, and 10 strikes. These this two is guys, so they, they basically had mirrored stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's been pretty much fastball changeup for both of them all day long. Tillman's mixed in some breaking balls. Our Fox Sports 1 pitcher comparison brought to you by Fox Sports 1, available on all television providers. The first pitch to Ryan Flaherty is taken for a strike on the outside corner. You can go to FoxSports1.com to find out what channel it is on on your provider. Flaherty has accounted for the only run for the Orioles, a home run back in the third. There's one ball and one strike. And there's that changeup. And, and that's going to be a big, big tell. Last inning, his changeup was up in the zone. First one, this inning's down. That was a curveball. Wait till the seventh inning to break out a curveball. Yeah, that's a straight up curveball right there and a good one. Two balls and a strike to Flaherty.
Change up. Two and two. Or maybe that splitter. Yeah, and you can see the bullpens getting up and everybody moving around down there. Everybody wants to come in. Chavez, Cook, and Blevins all pitched in last night's game for Oakland. Two balls and two strikes. The count here to Flaherty with one away in the seventh. He gave him the sinker sign right there. Instead, he goes up top and Flaherty chases the fifth strike out of the game for Parker. And, and we're going to look at the three pitches that I think are they're three different pitches. There's his fastball right there. This pitch right here, I think that's a split. And this pitch, I think, is just a straight change. I, I honestly believe he's throwing a straight change and a split. And I've never seen anyone that does that. Two outs now for Brian Roberts. Walked his last time up. Struck out back in the third. And there was that curveball again. Yeah. Is it a curveball or a slider? That's, that's kind of a slurvy. The first one was a pretty good curveball. That one was more of a slurve. Comes back with a changeup. One on one. It's almost like it's wiffle ball for Jared Parker. Yeah, and that right there, that's a split. You can see the, the kind of movement on it. It's got that side to side and down to it, where a straight change just doesn't get there. Roberts popped up, shallow left, going out as Lowry Cespedes coming in, and a quick one, two, three in and worked by Parker. We are through seven. It is a one-one ball game here in Baltimore. By going out to the ballpark, go to MLB.com slash Sunday to find special ticket offers tomorrow in game three of this series. It'll be Sonny Gray against Scott Feldman. We spoke to both those guys during this broadcast. And now here into the eighth, Chris Young takes the first pitch curveball high for a ball from Chris Tillman. And Tillman's done a fantastic job. He's gotten him into the eighth inning now. Another change up right there. And the funny part about listening to Buck talk about this guy, he'll get his pitch count will get up there around his limit, and he'll come in the dugout and hide from Buck so he can't find it. 
Darren O'Day is warming up in the bullpen now two balls and a strike to Young. He does not want to come out of the game and those are the kind of guys I like. Uh, I don't want somebody looking over their shoulder looking over at the dugout with that come get me look on his face. He's still got hop on his fastball. Phenomenal numbers in his career against the American League West. He gets young looking. That's three strikeouts in a row for Tillman. Eight in the game. And this right here is simply a hitter looking for an off speed pitch and gets frozen with a fastball. Beginning on Monday, Fox Sports 1 will take you inside the pennant race to follow baseball's best in their hunt for postseason glory. It starts with an exclusive look at the Pittsburgh Pirates seeking their first playoff appearance in over 20 years. Mission October premieres Monday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. And you want to know something amazing about the Pittsburgh Pirates? This would be the 21st year with a losing record. Yep. Who's number 21 for the Pirates? Roberto Clemente. Exactly. Not going to let it happen in year number 21. No. The baseball gods are amazing. Yes, they are. Eric Sogard takes the fastball in the outside corner. No balls and two strikes. We talk about the Pittsburgh Pirates, a one-game lead over the Cardinals. The Reds three and a half back. Those teams, very good chance as Sogard strikes out. Four in a row now by Tillman and nine in the game. And this is where a starting pitcher can start to mess with hitters. None of these hitters are going up there getting off-speed pitches and off-speed counts. He's getting stronger as we go along. Nine strikeouts. A career high. It ties a career high. And he's at 111 pitches. He needs to get through this inning and run hide from Buck. <laughs> because he is still throwing the ball exceptionally well. First pitch to Suzuki, 94 miles per hour. That's as hard as he's been clocked all day long. And this is my point to the pitch count. If he's not struggling, it doesn't matter how many pitches he throws. You think about let's go through an inning by inning. He had one inning where there was some stress. Other than that, there's been no stress on the guy all day long. The sixth inning was the inning of stress, and since then, he struck out four in a row, retired six in a row. And now they're getting a the wave going. They're having so much fun here at Camden Yards. One and two to count. Well, this is where he needs to bear down. The inning ain't over till it's over. And make a quality pitch right here. Right now, Suzuki doesn't have a clue what's coming. He struck the first two guys out on fastballs. So he doesn't know what's coming. One, two. In the air to left field. McLeod racing over to make the catch. 12-pitch inning for Tillman. We go to the bottom of the eighth. We are all tied at one.
by the makers of One a Day Men's, the official multivitamin of Major League Baseball, and by Fox Sports One, America's new sports network. It is a pitcher's duel here at Camden Yards on this Saturday afternoon, 1-1. As we go to the bottom of the eighth, Jared Parker will have to face the top of the order for the Orioles. Chris Tillman looking on. I think he's done. And it's hard to believe. His last two innings pitch, he's thrown 12 pitches, 9 strikes, and 3 balls. 16 pitches, 11 strikes, and 5 balls. McLeod takes the first pitch curveball for a ball, 1-0. and one for three on the day. An infield single back in the third. Two fly outs to right. Tillman has pitched well enough to get that 15th win. They need to hit a solo homer or something in this inning. Fastball in the outside corner. One and one. Both guys have pitched well enough to get a win. Don't Absolutely. forget Jared Parker. 15 straight starts without a loss. And he may not get one today either. He's thrown the ball exceptionally well. though. Two innings ago, I thought he was getting getting to the verge of coming out of this game because everything was starting to get up. And now he's getting everything back down again. There's the closer, Jim Johnson, warming up. Tie game at home. You bring your closer in. They're hoping right now to have a lead going for that ninth inning. 2-1 in there. And that's a change up again. In the seventh inning, Parker broke out a curveball. 3-1 on the first pitch in this inning. Two balls and two strikes to McClough leading off here in the eighth. Missing inside three and two. And, and she, with that show me fastball, he tried to freeze him on the inside corner with a fastball right there, that swing back pitch. It would not surprise me at all to see him go to that change up here. The payoff pitch. McLeod serves one into right field for a leadoff single. me say earlier in the game that down and into a left-hander is their nitro zone and you look at this pitch down on the inner third of the plate and you see Tillman he's cheering for a run well the cloud on at first base Machado at the plate a lot of possibilities got the possibility for a stolen base McLeod 29 of 34 on the year Machado handles about well yeah, McClough has got to make sure he gets back. You, you cannot get picked off in this situation. You got Sogard up the middle who's shading up the middle. So Sogard's going to cover on anything stolen base. And Machado does handle the bat well, which brings a hit and run into play. Machado squares to bunt. Bunted through it. No balls in one strike. And the one thing you don't want to do when you're squaring the bunt, and I've never understood this at the big league level. You've played baseball your whole life. I don't understand guys that can't bunt. All you're doing is catching the baseball with the bat. You saw right there Machado kind of push, poked at the ball with the bat. All you're doing is letting the ball come to you. Squaring around early. Charging as Donaldson pulls it. And he gets the bunt down. McLeod. With good speed, gets down to second base, and he had an awkward slide because he was fooled. It looked like Jed Lowry deked him out. Yeah, and he, he's laughing, so it looked like it was a, a bunt and run right there. Oh, it was just a bad slide. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Nate. There's probably only 15 or 16 cameras in the park that caught that. <laughs> They'll have that on a loop in the clubhouse. It'll be a sacrifice 2-4 for Machado. Into scoring position is McLeod. Double barrel action as Dan Otero and Sean Doolittle warm up for the A's. You get the lefty Chris Davis coming up and then Adam Jones on deck. 
And again, we come to this point. You've got the manager going out there and Bob Melvin. Chris Davis is at the plate. First base is open. Davis, 0 for 3. What do you do? What? I said earlier, I ain't pitching to him. You do not have to beat me over the head with the damp mop twice. He's got 46 home runs and 117 RBIs. Adam Jones, he's got a lot of RBIs and home runs too. And as you see. Pitch to him. I wouldn't either. The Parker. fans don't like it, but I don't know how you don't go with this ball. No, you have to. Parker has thrown the ball too well to have it come down to a, the one guy on that team that if you're going to sit in a, a pitcher's meeting and go over hitters, this is the guy we're not going to let beat us. Here's the next question. Does Parker get to face Adam Jones or do they go to the bullpen and take in o and bring in Otero? If it was me with the pitch count where it is right now and, and the way he's throwing the ball, I don't believe in pitch count. I'd let Parker face him, but I bet he doesn't. Bob Melvin near that dugout step. I think he's going to go to the right hander out of the pen. This is one of their young studs on the mound that they're going to be counting on from for years to come. First and second one out after the intentional walk to Davis. This really surprises me and I like it a lot. I agree with you. I'm a big fan of this move here by Bob Melvin. You, you find out what pitchers are made of when you get to situations like this late in the game. Adam Jones walked his last time up. 0 for 2. A line out to left and a strikeout. pitch fastball is low inside for ball one. You look at the hole between first and second and the gap in right center field. They've, Young's got him shaded toward left center. And I like the fact that Parker's coming in right there, but that tells me if I'm Jones, they're trying to come in on. Good pitch. Good numbers by Jones. Hey, you don't get, you know, 94 RBIs by August 24th without hitting well and with runners in scoring position. No, and you think about it. He's hitting behind a guy that's got 117. The 1-1. One, one. Fastball's inside. 2-1. Adam Jones, good numbers over his last 18 games. 364, five home runs, 20 RBIs. Had a home run and three RBIs in last night's game. A 9-7 victory for the Orioles here in game two of this three-game set. It's a 1-1 game, bottom of the eighth, one out. Runners on first and second. Well, Parker has managed to navigate his way through this lineup all day long. This is where he really shows what he's made of. Jam shot, third base. Donaldson to second for one, over to first. Not in time. Jones able to beat it out. Fielder's choice, 5-4, first and third, two outs. And that's twice now that Jones has hustled out. He got down a second to break up a double play, and now he beats this one to avoid the double play. Yeah, this isn't really a double play ball. Really good job by Sogard right, Sogard right there to get up and out of the way of that uh, slide at second base. Coming into this game, Matt Wieters on the season against right-handers is hitting 218 versus left hitting 280. 0 for 3 in the ballgame. And this is where the pressure now becomes on Suzuki because he's got to keep that split finger in front of him. Let's pitch. Split or change up? Which one? That, that to me, I think, was a split. McLeod led off with a single. He's at third base. Jones just reaching the fielder's choice at first. 
And they play Weeders absolutely straight up in the field. The 0 1. Chasing a fastball. No balls and two strikes. Now you go a notch higher. Keep it in the middle of the plate and just keep walking the ladder on him. He showed you he would go after that pitch. Now go higher. But you said that high fastball is difficult to throw. Oh, I never had trouble throwing the high one. <laughs> it's high and keeping it in the middle. If it's up and away from him, he can drive the ball out of the park. But if it's up in the middle. Oh, two wow. just missing outside. One ball and two strikes. That's a pretty good pitch right there. Parker is still making real quality pitches. It almost seems like both guys, Tillman and Parker, have gotten stronger as this game has gone on. If I'm being honest, neither one of them deserves a loss in this game. I agree. The one two. In the dirt. Good stop by Suzuki. Two balls and two strikes. Well, he just showed him that split down. Change his eyes again. Go back up with your fastball. The Oakland A's this year, they've won with pitching and timely hitting. They're hoping their pitcher, Jared Parker, can come through right here. 2 2. Ground ball, shortstop. Lowry to first, and Parker gets out of the inning. No runs on one hit, two men left on. We go to the ninth, tied at one. Fox Sports Supports is proud to partner with Stop Out Bullying, the leading national anti-bullying organization for kids and teens in the United States. Stop Out Bullying focuses on preventing bullying and all forms of digital abuse. It educates against racism and hatred, deters violence in schools and online, and helps at-risk students. To learn more, visit stopoutbullying.org. Jared Parker got out of that jam, a hug with Kurt Suzuki. He went eight innings, and Mitch, like you said, Tillman, Parker, both pitched so well, they did not deserve to lose. And now the new pitcher into the game for Baltimore is Darren O'Day. Five and two with a 2.32 ERA, 53 strikeouts, 13 walks, and 54 and a third innings. He's been a very good pitcher for Buck the last couple of years. Was with the Rangers for a few years. 
Coco Crisp takes the first pitch for a ball. Machado is playing in at third base with a threat of a bunt by Crisp. And now Parker's going to sit in the dugout and hope that he can watch his team score him a run and get him a W in this game. A frisbee breaking ball. Two balls and no strikes. Well, at the very least for Parker, the streak will run to 16 without a loss. Yeah. And he threw the ball exceptionally well today. Both starters did. That frisbee slider or curveball, whatever you want to call it. Now three balls and no strikes to Crisp. Well, it's backing up on him. And it, it's curious to me. I, I wonder if Coco went up here with the idea in mind that he's going to take a strike. Right. O'Day does not get you out with strikes. He gets you out getting you to chase balls. There's a strike on the outside corner. Crisp thought he had ball four. And Jed Lowry, I saw him speaking to Bob Melvin at around the second pitch of this at bat. So you got to think that if Crisp does get on, look for a bunt from Lowry. No question. As good as Balfour has been for the A's this year closing, he's going to do everything he can to generate that one run. Crisp to deep right field. 2 1 Oakland leads. And that's what happens when you put yourself in a triple count. You get a guy that's a leadoff hitter that allows him to go up there now instead of he changes his mind frame from I'm going to walk to now I got to a 3 1 count and I got myself in a hitter count. I'm going to look to jump out of here. That's Third exactly straight what happened. Game with a home run for Coco Crisp. And that's his 13th of the year. And now Oakland leads 2 to 1 here at the top of the ninth. And the first pitch to Lowry is a strike. And that's been the thing that's, that's hurt this Oriole club all year long. Yes, they're number one in the league in home runs hit, but they're also number one in the league in home runs allowed. One ball, one strike here to Lowry. I believe that's O'Day's seventh that he's allowed this year. Bob Melvin said, we go as Coco Crisp goes. And he gave him the day off in the field because he just wants his body to stay healthy for the rest of this way. So he puts him in as a DH, leads him off. Flies out twice, grounds out once. Thought he had ball four. And Instead, it's 3 1, and then he hits a home run. Now on the outside corner, two and two, and Coco Crisp. He's a streaky home run hitter. I just said it's his third straight game with a home run. He had a span of four games in a row with a home run. April 5th to April 9th. So quick math. Seven of his 13 home runs in a span of seven games. And there's Balfour warming up. Yeah. And he's been extremely good. Lowry strikes out for the first out of the inning. And this is what I talk about looking in a zone that right there. He put himself in, in a, what we call a cripple count meaning O'Day has to throw a ball exactly where he wants it or he's not swinging. One away now for Josh Donaldson who's 0 for 3. That pitch reminds me of Jeff Nelson. Very that similar. Frisbee slider, that delivery. Yeah, very similar. Jeff is a little taller. 6'8. <laughs> Good pitch. That's like a video game type pitch. Yeah, any anybody that throws from down, down under, as we say. 
it's hard to get the ball to change or get depth on the ball. Everything's going to be side to side movement. And you see that that pitch breaks, but that one actually had some downward sink to it. That's the key to it. You have got to be able to get the ball to change planes. If you don't, the ball stays very flat and you can't get it off the barrel of the bat. Did you ever just toy around with the idea when you're throwing, dropping down? Oh, I used to drop down to left handers. I, I would drop down and throw a slider. But they always knew. I never threw one fastball out of from down under. Now he chases the high fastball. Back to back strikeouts here by O'Day. Spend $10 or more with your MasterCard when you dine out. And MasterCard will donate up to $4 million. One precious cent at a time. Dig in and do good, everybody, because when everyone does their part, it's priceless. Two outs for Brandon Moss. Again, Machado goes all the way from third base in the shallow right field. Well, and this is a guy that O'Day's got to be careful with. As I said, his, he can't get his fastball. It does not sink very good. It's going to be flat. And, and Moss has lots of power. And in BP, he put on a show. Brandon Moss and Nick Marquez both played in Double A Eastern League at the same time in 2005. Moss was with Portland. Marquez was, was with Bowie. And, the number of players that were in that league that year, Hander Ramirez, Dustin Pedroia, those guys were teammates with Moss. John Lester, Jonathan Papelbon, Annabelle Sanchez. It's a lot of talent. A dribbler. O'Day. Tough play. High throw, and that's why. Roberts backing it up. A really good job. Excuse me, by that's him. actually Machado backing it up. Really good job by Machado backing that up and an even better job of Moss knowing that Machado was there and not turning in once that ball went over Davis's head. Your first instinct is a base runner right here is to turn in. But you see he sees Machado down there. And the other thing he stayed in the runner's lane. Had he not been in that runner's lane on the dirt they could have called him out. Bill Castro, the pitching coach, will come out to pay a visit to O'Day. He just knew the way that O'Day throws the ball to field that and get it by the, the, the runner, it was going to be tough. Yeah. You definitely don't want the ball up in that situation. You want to throw it in. And I mean, you look at you wonder why Davis didn't try for it. I don't think O'Day had a good grip on that ball. That's what we call a grenade. <laughs> Just get rid of it. Yeah. I, I don't think he had a very good grip on that ball. Because the first baseman's always going to be looking to the inside part of the diamond there for the throw. Two away after the error by O'Day and Jonas Cespedes comes up 0 for 3 with three strikeouts. And he O'Day definitely does not want to be down in the zone here. No strikes to Cespedes. A leadoff home run by Crisp here in the ninth has given Oakland a 2 1 lead. Wild swing by Cespedes, one ball and one strike. And with that lead, if Balfour can hang on for the save, it'll be the eighth straight win for Jared Parker. Now, 
No, that's a guy you want doing it. He's been exceptional this year. And he is from down under. He's 55 of 58 in save opportunities since 2012. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. And he gets animated out there on the mound. No, we talked to Bob Melvin about that, and he says he does it to himself. He'll go to yelling and stuff, and a lot of people think he's yelling at someone. He's not. He's yelling at himself. Cespedes fly ball to center field. Jones backs up a couple steps, and that'll do it here in the ninth. Balfour will be coming in looking for his 32nd save thanks to Coco Crisp's 13th home run of the year. 2-1 Oakland. is available on all major cable and satellite providers. Go to FoxSports1.com to find out what channel Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports 2 are on in your area. Bottom of the ninth inning here in Baltimore. And the closer, Grant Balfour, is in for Oakland, trying to win this one for Jared Parker. A great pitcher's duel here today from Camden Yards. And Balfour's numbers on the season, very, very good. He is 0-2. But a 1.84 ERA, 31 of 32 in save opportunities. In 49 innings, Balfour has walked 18, struck out 57. And he will face Marcakis, Hardy, and Flaherty. And this is a guy that in Tampa was considered a setup man. He most definitely has a temperament to be a closer. Some guys close in a different fashion. I was more like Balfour than Mariano. Mariano's out there like he's out there in a rocking chair. This guy pitches like his hair's on fire. Only one blown save on the season for Balfour. It was back on July 23rd at Houston. Allowed three runs on three hits. Matt Dominguez with the home run and a 5-4 loss. And the first pitch fastball is in there first strike. And you see, he doesn't, there's not a whole lot of messing around going on with Balfour. He's going to come at you. Yeah. 
Quickly, no balls and two strikes. And you see, there's not a whole lot of movement on that fastball. That's just straight four seam, 94 miles an hour. Both of those in a great location, though. Down and on the outer third of the plate. Strike three. That's three pitches, three fastballs, and a strikeout. Time for the Burger King play of the game, brought to you by Burger King, where taste is king, and it's Coco Crisps. Go ahead, home run in the ninth inning. That could make Jared Parker a winner. And you look at those three pitches right there. There wasn't two inches difference in any of the three. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. J.J. Hardy, 0 for 3. Fastball is outside. You know what's great, though? Coming here to Baltimore, and we talked about it in the open, about Oakland and Baltimore, August 24th, that the game has meeting. In a great sports town like Baltimore, where you have the Orioles, and here in the national anthem, and everyone yells, oh, and you go to the Ravens game, and everyone's to that. The 1-0 pitch, in there for a strike, one ball and one strike. Just sports all around. Great golf courses if you like golf. You mentioned golf before Caves Valley. Unbelievable. They're hosting the LPGA International Crown next July. I mean, it's great to see baseball back and the fans back here in Baltimore. Well, I had the opportunity to play back when Earl Weaver was here. And, and baseball was so prevalent here in the Baltimore area with, with the Ripkins and Earl Weaver and Eddie Murray. It was hard to come to Baltimore and play. So much fun walking around this ballpark and being around these fans this weekend. One away here in the ninth inning. J.J. Hardy ahead of the count two and one. Fouls it back. Now two balls and two strikes. The producer of today's game is Larry Lancaster. The director is Mitch Riggin. The associate director is Shavag Devaskar. And the broadcast associate is Ben Toder. The technical producer is Michael Montavane. And the technical director is Dan Berger, our statistician, Dave Kors. The pregame show produced by Dan Comiati and directed by Mark Deaver. The great thing about Balfour in this inning, he's using his strength, which is his fastball, to the weakness of the hitter. Markakis, three straight fastballs on the outer third. Every fastball in this at bat to J.J. Hardy has been down and on the outside corner. When you can do that and locate your fastball like that, it's still the best pitch in baseball. A located fastball. Two balls, two strikes to Hardy, who has been very good since 2011. Balfour's 2 2. Right back to Balfour. Nice play, gloves it, throws to first, two away. You talk about not missing your spots, Justin. That's every pitch. Five there, three. That's eight pitches where he did not miss his spot. Ryan Flaherty, the only run in the game for Baltimore back in the third inning. Took a fastball in the inner part of the plate. Over that wall in right field. And that's it. Right now, he's trying to extend this game. Well, I can bet you he's not going to get anything on the inner third. First pitch pops it up foul into the seats behind home plate. You know it's curious to me the right handers come up there and Balfour is at 96 left handers come up there he's at 94. But he stood that was the worst location of every pitch he's thrown so far that was in the middle of the plate. That stat right there speaks to what Oakland has been all season long relying on pitching and coming through with timely hitting relied on their pitcher Parker got the timely hitting by Chris. And it's no balls and two strikes here to Ryan Flaherty. And you see, again, he's not. The one mistake he made was the first pitch to Flaherty. That was a fastball middle middle. There again, he's hitting his spot on a dime on the outer third. Flaherty's going to have to take him out, out of the park to left field in order to beat him or to tie him. The 0-2 from Balfour. Got him swinging, and Oakland takes game two of this series, two to one. A perfect inning for Balfour. 
And the final score is 2-1 Oakland. For Mitch Williams, this is Justin Kutcher saying so long from Baltimore. Now let's go to Greg Amsinger and Daryl Hamilton at the MLB Network Studios for more post-game coverage. Up the middle.